The intensity and drama of playoff hockey are back in full force this weekend at Ralph Angelstad Arena with the return of the NCHC quarterfinals. And to help set the stage, let's go back to our Grand Forks studios with UND hockey beat writer Brad Schlossman and Alex Heiner. Thanks, Jay. Well, Brad Schlossman of the Grand Forks Herald, North Dakota, coming off a weekend in which they earned the right, with a little bit of help, to host a first-round conference playoff series for the 16th straight season. Put into context a little bit how impressive that feat is. Well, I, I think one thing when you take a look at the big picture uh, this year, we've heard all the frustrations from the fans mm -hmm. and even the, the players and the coaching staff uh, uh, that uh, they think they, they should be in a better position and, and, and some of the losses. And then, uh, you know, as, as the fans are, are talking about this being one of their most frustrating seasons they watch, you see they finished fourth place in the toughest <laughs> league in college hockey and on the top half of the standings. And um, when you can do that in a down year and still finish fourth in the NCHC and that's your down year, that's, that's you know, saying something. And uh, when you look at uh, what everyone else has done around the country and see that only one team is within a decade of that run, yeah. and, and that's Boston College, and they're still seven years back, I believe it is, um, you know, that's, uh, that's a quite a run of consistency, especially in an era where uh, these teams are losing guys early. Right, um, for sure. North Dakota's lost 10 guys mm -hmm. in the last three years. No one in college hockey has lost more early signings to the NHL. Uh, even before then, they, they had a run where they lost a bunch of recruits to Major Junior. Yeah. And, and so they've really navigated a tough landscape to, to be able to do that. Yeah, it's easy for, to forget how much parity there is in college yeah. hockey, how tough it is for teams to stay at the top of North Dakota again doing so. We talked briefly, by the way, about some of the key guys that have left North Dakota. Still some talent on this team. We saw that mm -hmm. reflected in the NCHC all-conference teams that came out. Christian Milanen picking up a second mm -hmm. team nod. Colton Pullman, honorable mention. Feel like that's about right for UND as far as representation goes? I, I think so. I, those are the two guys that uh, have, would have jumped off the page at me for sure. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Christian Milanen has been uh, dominant offensively. He's the, the leading scorer of the team. Uh, a D-man hasn't led UND in scoring since 83 when James Patrick did it. Pretty good player there. Uh, played a lot of years in the NHL. Yes, I, I think 21 years maybe in the NHL. Colton Poolman quietly has been dominant mm -hmm. uh, both ways. He's been really good offensively. Uh, he can make things happen. And, and defensively, uh, I think if uh, it comes down to the last 30 seconds in the game protecting a lead, uh, there's no one you want on the ice more than Colton Poolman. Yeah, certainly a lot of UND fans, again, keeping their fingers crossed that number 24 will be back in Grand Forks <laughs> yeah. for another season. Well, he and his teammates have some work to do if they want this season to continue, starting with this series against Omaha this weekend, a Maverick team that North Dakota split with during the regular mm -hmm. season, each team winning on the opposition's home ice. It's yeah. a, UNA to, a UNO team, though, that has been so different. And what, from what they've done at Baxter Arena to what they've done on the road this season. What, why is that, Brandon? Uh, it's tough. I, I asked them when I was there. That was my big story. I went and said, uh, what is it with this place? Why, why are you guys uh, playing so well here? And none of the guys could really give me a great sure. answer. Yeah. They, they did say, uh, you know, they emphasized that at the start of the season that uh, they wanted to make Baxter a really tough place to play, and they've done that. Um, but, you know, one of their road wins was up here this year and mm -hmm. um, I, I think we looked at some of the special team splits and uh, maybe that uh, shows why they haven't had a lot of success on the road. Uh, special teams uh, play such a key role for, for this Omaha team and uh, when Omaha has beaten UND, that's that's been the reason why. Yeah, certainly a key series for both of these teams because of where they sit on that pairwise bubble. Omaha coming mm -hmm, into this yes. weekend, 14th in the pairwise. North Dakota right behind them in 15. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you do not win this series, you likely <coughs> will not be playing in the NCAA tournament. Yeah. But for North Dakota, it's even a little more complicated than that. Yeah, for, for sure, North Dakota, if they lose the series, uh, I couldn't find any situation where they'd make the mm -hmm. tournament. Omaha actually could sneak back in if they lose the series in three games. Um, for UND, not only is it important to win the series, it would be huge to win it in two rather than three. Huge difference in the pairwise whether they win in two, in two or three. Uh, and then of course, if they win, there's two games in St. Paul because whether they win or lose the first game, there is a third place game. Mm -hmm. um, and the third place game would have the same value in the pairwise as the semifinal game. So um, a couple more games could be big there. Uh, 16 teams make the tournament. 
We know number 16 will not be in the tournament in the pairwise because Atlantic Hockey is going to take that yeah, spot right there. From that um, North Dakota's right now is 15. What they need to watch is make sure that none of the underdogs, so to speak, win other conference tournaments and get automatic bids. In the three leagues that you really got to watch are the WCHA, Hockey East, and ECAC. Uh, in the WCHA, you want Minnesota State Mankato to win the tournament. Um, in the ECAC, you want Cornell or Clarkson to win the tournament. And in Hockey East, you want Northeastern or Providence to win the tournament. Um, if two of those things don't happen, UND is going to be in real tough shape because uh, I ran a ton of scenarios <laughs> and had a, a tough time finding scenarios where UND ends up 13th in the pairwise um, without winning the frozen faceoff. So they're more, most likely looking at 14-15, even with a win this weekend. So um, UND needs to take care of business, and they're going to be scoreboard watching a little bit. And unless they go and win the tournament, that's the easy that thing would be, to do. That would be the easy <laughs> thing to take that up. So they still control their own destiny, they do. technically. They do, and that's, that's important because uh, uh, they could be one of those teams that come through and win the tournament. We've seen it in the past. Yeah. And the way this team's played against Denver and St. Cloud, They've played those two teams four times in the second half of the year, and all four went to overtime. Yeah. So it, it's not, uh, you know, you can't just uh, put that out of the realm of possibilities because who knows. It, it does feel like a UND team that raises their game when they play mm -hmm. the best in the country. For sure. And certainly when the chips are on the line, this team yeah. typically steps up. So something certainly to watch this weekend. Yeah. North Dakota fans hoping for a sweep to move on to St. Paul and keep their NCAA tournament hopes alive. Brad, thanks again for the time. We'll see you throughout this weekend. For sure. Thanks, Alex. Brad Schlossman. Jay, back to you. All right, thanks, guys. Well, you can watch that UND Omaha series in its entirety live here on Midco Sports Network Friday, 7.15, Saturday, 7 p.m., and Sunday, if necessary, that one would be at 7 p.m. as well. Well, between college, high school, we've got plenty of hockey coming your way over the next few days. We'll take a look at Midco SN's full weekend schedule when Midco Sports Tonight returns. Midco Sports Tonight, presented by Avera Orthopedics.